let's try and bridge the gap a little bit between the respondent and operant conditioning stuff. Uh, because in reality, you know, as we talked about, um, and as you've read about, they're not as separate as what we tend to hint that they are. You know, we, we break out these procedures uh, because they are different things. But when it comes to our everyday behavior, they really just mix and match. So let's take a look at it. Okay? Um, this stuff is working all the time. Right? There's no question that both of these things are happening at any given moment, um, especially with regard to humans. We are extremely susceptible to the operant conditioning stuff, unbelievably so. Uh, that's one of the reasons why our species is so successful on this planet is because our sensitivity to operant conditioning. Now, the respondent conditioning, a lot of organisms are sensitive to that, um, but it's our unique combination of these things that, that uh, um, gives us a, you know, a leg up, so to speak. Um, they are not really exclusive each of, uh, of each other, though. Uh, in you know, again, with my examples, we say, okay, here's a condition response, here's a or condition stimulus which leads to a condition response, or we say, here's a discriminative stimulus, a stimulus that leads to a response that is reinforced. In reality, those things can just mix and match and be on top of each other. So we often have respondent conditioning, and that's one big component of our behavior. We also have operant conditioning, uh, which is another big component of our behavior. But really what it is is that everything, that this combination of these things um, is, is the behavior that we typically see. Um, both processes are separate, but, it, but they're going on concurrently. That's the easiest way to think of it. Okay. Let's look at some examples here to help this make some more sense. So reinforcement and punishment, so operant actions, these things produce emotional reactions, right? We call that respondent conditioning, right? So the, the emotional reaction is a type of respondent conditioning. So if I earn a reinforcer, for example, um, that might make me happy, okay? Um, so that had the, the reinforcer itself as a condition or as a, is something that's going to strengthen a behavior, but it also serves to elicit a response of happiness. Now, is that happiness a conditioned response or an unconditioned response is a slightly different question, but it shows that those two things interact, okay? So a, a, another example, a conditioned response occurs, right? So something that's unpleasant, and you respond operantly, okay, to de decrease that conditioned response, right? Um, when, that de the, when that conditioned response is decreased, then you have a negative reinforcement situation. Whatever you did to decrease that unpleasant condition response is then going to be strengthened through negative reinforcement. So let's look at an example. So you've got a, fe uh, a spider that's going to elicit fear, right? So that's classical conditioning. So you have um, a CS, which is the spider, it elicits fear, that's your CR. But if you run away from the spiders in the future, that's going to reduce your fear. You know, as the fear is getting smaller, ha, 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 ha. Anyway, that's operant conditioning. So there's your negative reinforcement. So in the future, you are going to avoid and or escape the presence of fighters, uh, fighters, whatever that is, spiders, which will then reduce your fear. Right? Um, so here you see those two things, respondent and operant, working directly with each other. Uh, and this is a good example of how uh, of how these things interact. You can also think about it from the other perspective. We're talking about negative reinforcement. You could talk about positive reinforcement. What's something that produces something nice, right? So um, maybe a particular store or something like that produces, you know, it has food available. That food is really nice. Um, so in the future, you access that particular. Um, store. So it, it, it's a positive reinforcing situation, but the food itself is an unconditioned um, stimulus. It's not fear. It elicits happiness and satisfaction and those types of things. So this stuff really is so integrated into each other. And I kind of hint hinted at it earlier when I talked about how uh, reinforcers are conditioned, okay? because this is some of that, that process about how reinforcers are conditioned and how these things just I've said it a bunch, they interact, you know, it's kind of interesting how it does so. And it makes it very hard to tease any one behavior out um, and figure it out, is that a conditioned response or is that a uh, operantly conditioned response? What is it? You know, is it a CR? Is it an SD? Is it a um, behavior that's maintained through reinforcement, punishment, all those things? It really becomes a challenge to see how all these things interact. Uh, but that's part of the fun of it as well, is figuring out what the result is and, and figuring out how to maintain and uh, modify these particular behaviors. Thank you